in this first data set or in your first column, you will notice that you have uh, responses for smoking. And in the second column, column C, you have responses for drinking. But the responses that are listed, since it's a categorical variable, are non-numeric. And I put together this box here, this key, this legend that shows you what these alphabets mean. So N signifies non, O signifies occasional, H signifies heavy, S signifies smoker, D signifies drinker. Hence, under the smoking uh, category, if you see a response such as NS, it means that the person said he or she is a non-smoker. If you see the response HS, it means that the person is a heavy smoker, okay, and so on. And similarly, for the second column, if you see OD, it means that the person stated that he or she is an occasional drinker. So this is how you interpret the responses for your two categorical variables. Now, using this data set, we're going to put together a cross tabulation. Cross tabulations are also called cross tabs, or sometimes it's also called a contingency table. Now, I'm going to show you how you can create this table in two different ways. One is using the count ifs function, which is a little bit more complicated, or the other option is using the pivot table option. So, the pivot table option is very easy and it's an interactive tool. So first, let me show you how to make it using the count ifs function. So in Excel, you might have already used the count if function. That function is used if you want to specify only one single criteria. But there's also a second function, which is called the count ifs function. And that is used if you have more than one criteria. So in order to put together our table, let's first put together the column and the row headings. So here we're going to put the responses for under the smoking category. So all the possible responses. Okay. And in this column, we're going to put all the possible choices for the drinking variable. Okay, so here in this box, we're going to put together our count ifs function. So in Excel, all functions start with an equal to sign, equal to. Okay, so I'm going to double click. Now, the first thing you need to put is your criteria range. So this is your first data set. So now here we're going to specify our criteria, which is the second requirement for this function. So since I selected the smoking category, I'm going to select the first possible choice for that, um, you know, for that category. So NS, okay, comma. Now I'm going to select my second criteria range. So the second data set, which is the drinking categorical variable. And the last thing we need to put together in this formula is the criteria. What do I want to filter that category for with? So here I'm going to select the possible response for the drinking category. So before I press enter, I also want to be able to use absolute cell referencing because I want to be able to copy and paste the formula to the other selection columns that you see here and the two other rows that you see here. So this makes it easier for us. We can just copy and paste the formula and the answers will be displayed. So in order to do that, first thing you want to do is use absolute cell referencing and put the dollar sign. Um, in front of the column and the row. Okay, so what this does is, even if you copy and paste the formula to the other cells, this cell range B2 up to the entire data set will not change. Now, if I copy and paste this formula to the other cells, um, I know that the, this criteria has to change. Okay, so here I have J5. 
Now when I drag it to the right, I want it to change to, of course, OS and HS. So for that to happen, the row has to stay the same, but the columns can change. So it can become J5, K5, and L5. And if I want the columns to change, I'm not going to put the dollar sign before it. So this is our second data set that we had plugged into our formula. I want that data set to stay the same. Hence, we're going to do cell referencing and lock it. Okay. And again, we know that these are the possible choices. So when I copy and paste this formula to the other cells, I want the column to stay the same but I want the rows to change, okay? So that's why we're going to put the dollar sign and lock that cell, okay? Now we're gonna press enter and we're gonna copy and paste it to the right and down to the other cells. Now we're also going to add up these totals. So let's create our total column. Let's do our sum function, selecting the three cells Again, you can copy and paste it down. Let's make a total column here. Let's add it up and drag it all the way across. Okay. Now let's put together our grid line. Let's do a little bit of formatting. Okay. So here, we have used the count ifs function and created this um, cross tabulation for our categorical variable. So if your grand total is 8761, then you have done your cross tabulation correctly. Okay. Now I'm going to show you the second technique or the second way you can create this cross tabulation. So let me get rid of this. Now in this example, we are going to use the pivot table tools. So first what we're going to do is we're going to click on B1. We're going to click on the insert tab, click on pivot table. Now here in this box, I want to be able to use only the two categorical variables, smoking and drinking. So I need to make a little bit of change to this range that has been selected here because right now the first column has also been selected. Okay, so I wanna make it simple. So I'm gonna just remove that and select my two columns. And since I'm using a Mac, I'm pressing and holding the command shift and the down arrow. Okay, so the entire data set gets selected. The next thing is where do I wanna put this pivot table? I'm gonna select this existing worksheet and you can select any cell from your Excel sheet. Okay, so again, do a check. Here, the data set should specify your categorical variable data set. And here, you will specify where you want to place this table. Now, when the pivot table fields opens up, what I'm gonna do is drag smoking and put it on rows. Okay, let's try to make it similar to what we had before. So let me just replace this and put it back under columns. Again, as I mentioned before, pivot table is a very interactive table. You can build it on the go. So you can move things around. If you're not happy with how it looks, you can change the setting or the layout of it. So here I try to match it and make it similar to what we had before when we were doing the count ifs function. Now I placed smoking field under columns and drinking field under rows. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag the smoking field and put it under values. Here it should show up as count, okay? So count is you're counting it again, not adding it up because sometimes what happens is it can show up as a sum. So if you see a sum there, you need to change it by clicking right here. Now, of course you can compare the results with what you had before. I'm again doing a little bit of formatting. Okay, so the total grand total here again is 8,761. So here you can go ahead and change your label names. 
and you can do again a little bit of formatting middle of the line okay so this is how easily you can create your cross tabulation in excel using the pivot table tools so today in this example we learned two different ways one is using the count ifs function in excel and the second one is using the pivot table tools